But yeah, today we're going to talk about the 2009 film Red Line from Takeshi Koike. And he's done some notable other projects in Japan, which I have not been familiar with, but uh, I've heard good things about some of them. But uh, I decided to watch Red Line. And I believe it's a it's an original. It's not like based off any manga or anything. So that's pretty cool. But I talked to a friend about it before I watched it. And he was like, it's kind of like, it's like F-Zero meets Speed Racer, but just like cranked up. And I mean, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Those are some of the common comparisons that I've seen online. And my comparison, which I think is like the most clear comparison to me, is Star Wars Episode One: The Pod Racing. Um, I am just like a huge Star Wars guy, but like, I feel like that's the clearest comparison in my mind. Just like these deadly races that are just absolutely insane with like outside interference of people just trying to like shoot them down and they just don't care about their lives. They just want to win. And I mean, yeah, yeah, it kind of evoked those similar feelings to watching that for the first time when I was like a, like a little five-year-old watching Star Wars. And um, yeah, it was awesome. It's it's definitely more, I don't know what the rating was this is. It might be 14A, it might even be, uh, it could be R, maybe, uh, it's probably 14A, but still, alas. Um, the main thing with this movie, yes, it's just the visuals, the high intensity, the sound design, the music all coming together in this just like absolutely insane, blow your mind, speed, race. And I mean, yeah, I feel like the rest of the story is a little, you know, it's not the greatest. It's kind of expected. And some of the beats really do go where you are expecting them to go. But like, I mean, yeah, the racing stuff was super cool, super stylistic. Like, especially, I think one of the trademarks is what's shown in the poster here. The shots where it just absolutely, it starts up at his face and then it like, it drags the camera down and just stretches and morphs the entire frame. And it does that a few times. And when it does that, oh, the sense of speed is just like, is so awesome. And yeah, the sense of speed in the entire movie, the way they animated it, it was, it was beautiful. Like some of these lines just going around the air, wrapping around the visuals of just like the speed and like during the races, it was just so cool because I feel like a lot of times when they were racing, like if you're watching an animation and you're seeing the, uh, the racing going on, and it's, it's like, yeah, you see them go from one place to the other. But like when they do like their nitro or they're, they're really trying to gun for that final stretch, you see them like you're seeing that. But then it's like the acceleration and just like the weight of their booster just like exploding. And then you get close ups on him and his nose just like starts bleeding. And there's like this really gross sound effect when his nose starts bleeding. The intensity in the actual racing scenes are great. And the movie, the way it's structured is like sandwiched between two racing scenes. So you have a racing scene at the very beginning, kind of introducing everything. It was pretty cool called the yellow line, which is the qualifier for the red line which was the race at the very end of the movie. And so I'm going to go a little into spoilers, but again, the spoilers really don't matter too much because it is more about the experience. Um, the more lighter spoiler side, just like the grand narrative of the entire movie is scoped around like on a few different levels. So you have the race and all the racers, they just care about the race. They just want to get it done. And then on the grand scale, they're doing this red line race, which is just like la creme de la creme race. It's like the finals of everything. And it's on this world, Robo World. And then they get into a bit of like, like the intergalactic politics where Robo World is like this, this nation who are kind of like at war with a lot of the rest of the galaxy. But there's like the certain area that they're going to go on that they're going to do the race, which is supposed to be a demilitarized zone. So they're not supposed to have their military there. But then so many tourists and racers come and they want to like shoot them down because they're like, ah, we're a peaceful place. We don't want this grungy you know, violent racing happening here. And then, yeah, so they try to like shoot them down and there's that opposition. I feel like all of the racers, they, they really don't care about it. It's like if it was a movie just about the races and like the racers and you didn't know that was happening, it like wouldn't affect it. It like affected a bit being like obstacles on the course, but like none of them really talk about the politics like that much. They're just like, oh no, Robo World's a little scary but ah, we're going to go anyway. We're going to go anyway. Like I said before, the way the structure, the movie was structured, you have the yellow line race at the beginning, the qualifier, which he does not win because his car is blown up by his own mechanic. I know his own mechanic because they're entangled with the mob who lent the money to make the car. And now they're betting. The mob is betting on the races for him to come in second and not first. So they sabotage him at the very end without him knowing. 
wow. Good hook at the start, really. Good hook. Another side plot thing, but it did provide some good tension, in my opinion. And so he gets to go to the race in Robo World, even though we didn't want because the other people back down because they're too scared to go to Robo World. But hey, our cool, long hair protagonist is not afraid of that, of course. He's cool. He's just the typical anime badass. And so we go go to Robo World and just like a bunch of random middling plot development stuff happens that really I don't care about that much. So you have the plot of him getting with the main girl and it's like, yes, like the three girl characters in this are just like super objectified and it's like, ah, whatever. He like, you know, he talks to her a bit and then we have a bit of the, the cool animations that they had actually, they had on the TV, it was very like video game-esque, like f zero, like choose your character and it had a lineup of all the characters, then a little like bits of information about their backstory. That was kind of fun and stylist, stylistic, but it kind of went on for a bit. Um, and then, yeah, you had like the police raiding the bar and then there was like this fight and he was like trying to stand up for people and it's like, whatever, just get to the race. Um, oh, them building their car which was, I guess, kind of cool. We got into a bit about, like, the mechanics feuding. It's like, the one guy's like, yeah, we got to win. And the other guy's like, ah, I'm actually going to sabotage you at the end. But he, like, he didn't say it, but he was going to. And then the final race starts, which is just, like, I feel like the final race was a good chunk of the end of the movie, maybe, like, 30 minutes. But, like, oh, it went by so quick. It was just so fun. And at the same time, I'm like, I don't see myself as a big fan of, like, racing movies or, like, watching races in the first place. But I don't know. The energy about it, the Star Wars Episode One connections about it, it was just it was just all there, you know? You have the scummy, like, other racers who are trying to take you down, like Saboba in Star Wars, you know? I always I always rope things back to Star Wars. Hey, that's just who I am. But the race started, and, um, hey, it was awesome. You have, oh, yeah, a big, big plot point with the intergalactic stuff. You have Funky Boy, right. So, <laughs> just trying to find the name here. So, there's a big plot point where, I guess, this guy, this guy Kyle Flynn, kind of sums it up well. During the final race, oh, you can't see it here. During the final race, the uh, the big bad guys who own Robo World are like, this is getting out of hand. We got to destroy everybody. And so they have like this like kaiju little Godzilla like energy monster thing in hiding. And then they wake him up and he's called Funky Boy. And he just rises from the ground. He's this giant yellow energy blob. And he just does like these earth shattering beams of like just energy and destroys like everything but then he gets released and then everybody's like oh he's yeah we can't let funky boy loose he's gonna blow up robo world and he started to blow up robo world and then everyone's like oh we actually have to kill it and so they have this giant space laser and right after they woke it up and it destroyed everything they shot it and then they killed it the, the sad story of Funky Boy. But then, unknown to the Robo World people, a little bit of Funky Boy was left and not destroyed. And then it came back and tried to destroy everything again. It was crazy. Funky Boy, great, great kind of like villain. I don't know. He's just trying to survive and just like be himself. So, <laughs> I mean, it kind of impacts. So it's like the race was happening. These army people were trying to stop them. Funky Boy came up, was like destroyed everything. But then a few racers like didn't get destroyed and they came back. And then Funky Boy, they had to escape Funky Boy. And then they got right to the end. And like the big bad guy, the Saboba of the Redline universe. He's like this giant like robot guy who like straps into his car via his head. And he is one with the car. And then they have this like dramatic Cars-esque showdown. As in Cars, the Pixar movie. Where at the very end... Our main protagonist with his new lady in his cockpit. They get blown up. They're getting... Oh, so there was a bomb in there that the mechanic was going to sabotage him. But then the other mechanic found out and he grabbed the thing. But then he saw they were about to lose and he exploded it, propelling them to the finish line. And they're both in the air. And they just pass the other robot guy and they win. And in midair, they make out. And the movie ends with a text that says love and then a song starts playing uh like the love side plot was like the part i cared about the least like going into his backstory was okay you know he was a young lad he saw this really cool racer with a bunch of chicks and then he's like 
I want to be like you guys. And then he got with the lady at the end. He won the he won the race. He made out with her midair. It's like you guys are like gonna fall to the ground like fifty feet. It's gonna hurt. But then it just says love, and then the song plays in love. Where it's like I guess in conclude like the emotions of the movie, the adrenaline of racing akin to the adrenaline of loving somebody perhaps just like you know it makes you feel high the, the both both things he was just like so focused on his racing and now that he's a champ he's like i can focus on you lady it's like it was okay it was like the ending was whatever but we don't come to this movie for the emotional bits we don't come to this movie for for a good storyline, a really deep, thought-provoking storyline. We come to this movie because it's F-Zero meets Speed Racer meets Pod Racing, all in this sci-fi package with a like, kind of cool space opera backdrop. And it just looks really, really cool, the way they animate the races. like Not just like the way it looks, the colors and the designs, just the shots that they choose the way they stretch out the camera in that one shot, all those stylistic elements. All the racers had, like, their own, like... You could tell in the score, all the racers had their own, like, sound to them. I don't think they could make this live action. I think the closest things would be Speed Racer and Star Wars Pod Racing. And if you mix those together, it's like... I think Pod Racing, the vibe, comes closest to it because of just, like... The sounds, you know, each each pod had their own sounds and the intensity of it. But it's just so, like, oh, the world is so detailed. And, oh, I don't know, it would be tough. It would be really tough, but I think it would be really cool if they could make it work. I don't know, it just, ugh. like, the pod racing is just so, it's just so different. They're, like, they're, like, levitating. Like, the speed of just, like, the actual moving parts of these, the different set pieces that they go to. I mean, specifically Funky Boy, that would be insane to see live action. <laughs> that would be very insane. But um, I think it could be pulled off, but I don't think it would be as special. I think with a lot of anime adaptations, they're just not as special. I think you can also relate it to kind of like the Disney live action remakes, whereas the animation really brings something out in those stories and makes them special and makes them the way that they are. And there is not a single live-action Disney remake that is better than the original. And there's not even a single Disney live-action remake that's good. I don't think I've enjoyed watching, like, any of them. Maybe, like, Jungle Book? It was, like, fine. But, like, the, the original animation as a medium, it just, like, ugh. It just, it works the way it is. People know how to craft those things. I mean, it's been around for so long at this point. It's like, I don't really desire a live action remake of this or most things that I watch that are animated. But um, hey, that's just my piece. If they make it work, they make it work, you know? It's all just, you know, cool things that I'm watching with my eyes and ears at the end of the day. That's just what movies are. And hey, I had a pretty darn good time with Redline. It was a fun one. It was a really fun one.